you know, there's some sitting, but I'm sure trying to figure out how when we come to the Word of God that there are those who are still sitting. When we know that that is what our, again, if you're not able to stand, that's one thing. If you can stand, that's another. Amen. We stand out of respect for the Word of God. Amen. And uh, it's important that we do that. I know that, you know, we, we get used to new things. Some stuff that's old needs to remain. Amen. Amen. Before I do that, on the bottom of page 11 in your bulletin, and I say this because it's this weekend, um, on the first come, first term, save, first serve basis, there are three pair of complimentary tickets to the Build, Remodel, and Landscape Show. It's going to be happening, oh, is it today? Oh my gosh, I thought it was the 6th for some reason or other. I thought it was this weekend. I thought it was the 6th of the 6th through the 8th. So it would be this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday uh, at the Oregon Convention Center. That's okay, sis. From 11 to 5, uh, they will be on the table outside. So Sister Montgomery has those right now, and she will share that with you. Amen? And you are welcome to go. And if you don't go, then that means that I'll go. Amen. All right, in Psalm 124, Psalm 124 in the NIV, it says, If the Lord had not been on our side. Let Israel say, If the Lord had not been on our side. When people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. But I go back to the beginning and yeah. say, if it had not yeah. been for the Lord on our side. Yeah. Uh, amen. The, yeah. the, the psalmist said, where would I be? Yeah. Where would I be? Let us pray as we talk about divine deliverance. Oh Lord, we come to this very moment on this very day, thanking you for all that has been said and sung and prayed. Thank you for every way that you continue to bless and keep every one of us and help us to be the children of God that we have the great potential to become. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do, and we pray that even in a moment like this, that in every, every church and every house of worship, for every leader and every member, that people take a moment to remember and reflect that if it hadn't been for you on our side, where would we be, Lord? We thank you on this first Sunday of this first day of 2023. Help us to get it right. Help us to not make a New Year's resolution. Let's live in resolution that we will be greater in our relationship with you. And I pray right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will anoint this atmosphere, that we would be in position to not only hear, but engage and to remind ourselves that this is not a joke, this is not a show. This is an opportunity for us to be filled because otherwise we are filled with stuff that will not sustain us. But the Word of God will sustain us through everything, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And so we pray right now in the name of Jesus, that you would guide us, that you would bless us, that you would strengthen us. Let us hear your word. Let us use your word. Let us tell somebody else about your word. And let us be very active in our relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In your son Jesus' name, we pray for the message, for the messenger, for the word, for the hearers. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's give God a big hand of praise. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. 
When I was in trouble, you came to my rescue. Nobody but you, Lord. Do I have a witness here anywhere? Do I have, do I have a witness anywhere that somebody knows that that's, that that's my song, that's your song, that's our statement that, Lord, that nobody but you, nobody but you, when I was in trouble, come on, Glenda, I'm going to need you right now. I'm going to need you, praise team. I think y'all know that one, don't you? Uh, y'all, I just need your help. Can y'all come together over here? I, do y'all need me to come up there? Can I say from down here? All right. Yeah, thank you. Come on, y'all. Come, come together, y'all. Come on. If there's anybody in the audience, this is your song. You know, you can stand and sing with us as well. by the way, from 120 uh, to 134 are called Psalms of Ascent. Yeah. These psalms are recorded uh, to remind us that when the children of Israel were headed to the, uh, on high holy days, headed up to Jerusalem, uh, they would sing these songs together. As a matter of fact, what's interesting is that when you look at the text of each one of these songs, can you imagine a crowd of people walking, heading to a place in the wilderness. They were on their way, and somebody would start singing a song. Y'all don't hear that. So, somebody would start singing, and once they start singing, then other people would start singing as well. And so as you read all of these psalms from, um, from, uh, from 120 over to 134, I think it is, what you'll see is that every one of them are singing a song of praise to the Lord. Yeah. Psalm 124 is one of those that I've got to, I, I need you to, to be in reflection with me. First seeing and thinking about what this crowd of people must have looked like. All these folks, by the way, in the crowd, heading from various cities around yeah. Israel. Uh -huh. But they've come together and collected themselves and they're heading up by the way, because Jerusalem is sitting at 2,500 square, uh, 2,500 feet in altitude. Therefore, it's on top of a hill. They're making their way, but you know, in the distance, 
they can see the hill that they're headed to. I, I, I need somebody to walk with me for a minute. They, they, they know it's one thing to go somewhere. It's another to know that, by the way, there it is up yonder. We, we aren't there yet, but we're on our way. And while we're on our way, I just want to be able to praise God for what's about to happen when we get up there on the hill. You see, the people would continue to sing every one of the psalms we should see as an understanding that this is a song to the Lord. And they sang these songs on the way. And as the crowd continued to make their way, I've got to believe that sometimes they would keep on singing. You understand, there was no piano with them. I have no idea whether somebody had a trumpet or not. Somebody may have had a tambourine, but you see, they weren't worried about all that. They just wanted to be able to sing to the Lord and let the Lord know how much they appreciated what he had done for them. They wanted the Lord to know that they were clear understanding that while they were headed for a high holy day that the God who saved them is a God who takes care of them and protects them and guides them in every way that they knew that they were not alone that even as they were in this crowd they knew that God was with them do I have a witness here that's the truth they knew God was with them and they knew that day and night they would be suffering from both heat and pain and cold and all that stuff but they kept on trudging anyway. They, they kept on going anyway because in their mind, it didn't matter how cold it got. It didn't matter how hot it got because they saw out in the distance that place that they were trying to go. I, I, I know I've got a witness here somewhere. That's why, that's why David said that I will lift mine eyes to the hills from which comes my help. I know in Psalms 121, it's right there where he says, that's where my help comes from. It comes from the Lord. He said, he will not let the sun mess with me by day nor the moon by night that God has me. He'll protect us. He will keep us. They're saying it, folks. I'm telling you. And then at the end of Psalm 21, it says that he will watch over our coming out and our going in from now and forevermore. I know I've got a witness somewhere. That's a, that, that is a song of praise and a song of consolation. When we get to 124, I don't know what caused somebody to do it, but we all go with me in my imagination. I, I've got to believe that, you know, when you're walking on level plane, that everything is a lot easier. But when you start climbing up some and the, and the road begins to go up some, you know, it's not as easy to walk when the road is rising. And I've got to believe that some were sweating, some were hot, some were having a fit saying, you know, I may have to turn around and go. Y'all may have to go on ahead of me. But, but I've got to believe that somebody just broke out in song and said, you know, if it had not been, come on somebody, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. Somebody in the crowd start testifying and telling him, you know, I know that it's easy when the road is flat and it gets harder as the road begins to ascend upwards. But I need you to know that we've been on some roads that have been flat and we've been all right. But I need you to know we've been on some roads in life that have been hard to climb. But we haven't climbed those roads by ourselves. We've climbed those roads because we had somebody with us. So I have a witness here. There is no reason for us to feel like somehow we can't make it because you know what? There have been times when I felt like giving up myself. I, I, I wonder that somebody in the crowd had to say, I've wondered if it's worth all this stuff. Because sometimes I just get despondent. I get doubtful. It doesn't seem like things are working out for me. And I get tired and upset and bothered by family, by neighbors, by all these things. But somehow when I sit down and think about how good God's been to me. When I think about how far God has brought me, when I think about the fact that he's never left me, it causes me to say that just like with the children of Israel, I've got to believe that somebody starts singing a little bit and saying it would have not been for the Lord on my side. I've got to believe somebody was down here on flat land and they were looking up at somebody walking up the king highway and they were looking at them wondering how is it that you're able to do that and they turned around and said 
if it had not been. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. What do you mean? Well, let me tell you. Let me pause the singing for a moment and tell y'all that there were times when not only did I not think I was going to make it, I didn't want to make it. Do I have a witness here? There are times when I just get down, I get depressed, I get bothered, I'm messed up, and others are reminding me of the worst mistake that I've ever made. You see, when that stuff starts happening, it causes you to feel, what's it worth? But when we take reflection over the fact that God has brought us from a mighty long way, it doesn't matter anymore that whatever that was was back then. I said to the first service this morning, 2022 is over. Let all of that stuff be over. It's time for us to lift up ourselves and say, I'm going into a new year. And I'm going to go fully into this new year. The only one that doesn't want you to be all that you need to be is the devil himself. Don't think that somehow this is about God. It's not God who's keeping you at home. It's not God that's got you upset. It's not God that's caused you to be doubtful. It's not God that has caused you to say, I don't care anymore because you know we can all have an I don't care attitude sometimes. Amen belongs right there. Or that we've got family members who really mess us up sometimes. Their, their attitude can mess our attitude up. Do I have a witness here? And I came to tell you that it's not about that at all. Because remember, your salvation is not a team sport. It's all right to have family. It's all right to have friends and relationships with others. But I don't know about you. You see, I don't want my dependence on whether I get there or not to be because of somebody else. That, that, that's got to be because of me, because of my relationship with God. And I'm one who believes that your relationship with God is the most important relationship you have. And that there are those who take that relationship for granted. They take it for granted and don't nurse it, don't nurture it, or anything like that. And yet, there is no time for that kind of stuff because we are living at one of the craziest times our civilization has ever seen. I don't know why people don't give their life to Christ but I got news for you. You and I better keep on going doing what we're supposed to do because we know what we need to do. And I'm telling you that 2002 is, uh, 2022 is over. In 2023, I said this morning, we need to build a good foundation. And secondly, in this service, we need to understand that God is a God of deliverance. He'll take you out of that go from. He'll take you out of that doubt. He'll take you out of that stuff. Others may remind you of where you've been. God isn't worried about where you've been. He's concerned about where you're going. And I'm here to tell you, that's the only thing that matters. As we look at this, the, the Psalm of David reminds us as the people are climbing up to Jerusalem and somebody down here, as I said, is a little bit despondent and they can't figure out why somebody who's had more trouble than them is up higher walking up to Jerusalem. And I've got to believe sometimes, y'all hear me this morning, I've got to believe sometimes it's not just that you walk, it's about how you walk. Because you see, even in our Sunday school today, they showed us a picture of somebody who didn't have Christ. And that person was walking with their head down and their body bent. But the one who had Christ, don't, they didn't say a word about how much money they had, what kind of degree they had, or anything else. But all we know, they had a real active prayer life and relationship with Jesus Christ. And when you got that, even when you got a ton of bills that you don't know how to pay yet, I came to tell you, it'll make you walk a little bit different. It'll lift your head up a little bit and it'll cause you to understand that, listen, that person that's on the, on the lowlands, I've been that person before. Do I have a witness here? But I want you to know I want to live the rest of my life and certainly this year, I want to focus on being the person that's a few paces ahead that is going on anyhow. Have trouble, trial, everything else, but they're going on Way, walking with their head up, walking with the determination that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? The text 
reminds us, the text reminds us that the children of Israel had issues like we have issues. That the children of Israel, of Israel, even David, who was the king, still had issues. Do I have a witness here? David said here, the, the text says that if the Lord had not been on our side, uh, and, and, and then the repeat uh, for the children of Israel, let them say if the Lord had not been on our side, when what, preacher? So glad you asked. The person walking up the hill and the one that was down on the bottom, you see, that was still having trouble, that was on the flatlands, is that people attacked us. Yeah. Come on, somebody. People anger, got angry against us. There was a flood, and it engulfed us. There was a fire, and it could have swept over us. But I think you need to hear my language, because what the text tells us is that the flood may have come, but it didn't oversweep us. The fire may have come, but it did not burn us down. It's the case that the flood may have come, that people got angry against us, but we kept on walking anyway because we had a place that we were trying to go. And the good news is that, my friends, I want you to know that deliverance is on the way, that the person who's walking with their head down, you need to understand God has, is your God like he's our God. Do I have a witness here? And the fact is he is the God of deliverance. Do I have a witness? He is a God of deliverance. In other words, he's looking at your situation. He hears the complaints that you're making, but he's also standing with his arms wide open saying, you don't have to complain. All you have to do is to lay your cares on me, and I'll take it from here. I'll walk with you. I'll talk with you. I'll help you sort out the situations that you're dealing with in life. You need to know that our God wants us to live content. He wants us to live happy. He wants us to live in a way that we are able to have the strength to be able to go on even when it's hard to go on. We need to remember that if it were not for God on our side, all of us would be messed up. Do I have a witness here? And I'm so grateful for God. Do I have a witness here that this grateful that God is there in my life? The text reminds us that there are issues in every one of our lives. There are health issues, there are money issues, there are family issues, there are work issues, there are neighbor issues, there are community issues, there are national issues. All of these things are issues. I don't care whether you're 10 or you're 80 or 90, all of these issues affect all of us one way or the other. And here's what's important as you think of the bottom line of this lesson today. It's not the issue, it's how we address the issue. It's not the issue, it's about the hope that we bring to the issue. It's not anybody else's fault that we're dealing with what we're dealing with. We need to remember it is our opportunity to say, despite whose fault it was, I have an obligation to take control of my life and to take control of my relationship with God that I will not allow those things to bother me anymore, those things to tear me down anymore, those things to get me depressed anymore. I am determined to keep marching on. I'm going to march on when I can't get up. I'm going to march on when I don't want to get up. I'm going to march on when my lights get turned out. I'm going to march on when I don't have gas money. I'm going to march on when I get fired. I'm going to march on when I get a new job. things that we deal with. God is our delivering God. Amen. And I come to you today to tell you, don't allow yourself to sit in a puddle of, of nothing but feeling sorry for self. This is a time to get out of that puddle and say, you know what? There is a God out there. It's not a puddle I'm in. It's a pool I'm in. Come on, somebody. And not only does he give me a pool to be in, he teaches me how to swim. Hallelujah, somebody. 
I know that I've been down. I know that I have felt like I can't make it. I've had bursts of moments when I felt like I could, but ultimately I keep giving up. I want you to know today that your God is an energizer buzzy buddy. He's got a generator ready for you or me. And I came to tell you that he's looking with his arms wide open to hear you say, Lord, I want to give you another chance in my life. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Let's tell him be prepared to go. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I have a feeling if we just did that and used that as the preamble to a sentence and went around this room, everybody would have an ability to add to that statement. But I'm telling you, the text tells us that that very God is standing with his arms wide open to every one of us. This morning at the end of the service, a man came up to me and said, you know, Pastor, I've been going to church here for the last year. He said, it's time for me to give my life to Christ. Y'all didn't hear me. He said, I wanted to do it today, but my sister, who brought me in the first place, she's not here, and I really want her to be here when I give my life to Christ. And I said, brother, you just need to know one thing, and that is that God has already heard what you have to say. Amen. God has already heard. And I absolutely believe that on next Sunday morning, when he comes down, he said, because I have a testimony. He said, and I really want, because I told him, we can take you right now, brother. We don't have to wait till next week. He said, but pastor, I've got a testimony. I need people to hear what it is that's on my heart and what God has done for me in this last year, coming to church every Sunday at the 8 o'clock service. I said, well, you know what? Then next week, you'll have your opportunity to say those very things. My friends, in this very service, or for anybody who's listening or watching, I want you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Let, let me just tell you, as a living witness, there is no other relationship that's better than that. And I promise you that it does not mean everything's going to be good and wonderful all the time, but what's for sure is that your relationship with Him will be. Do I have a witness here? Your relationship with Him will be... And you'll have to deal with the issues just like all of us do when it comes to life itself. It is tough. But here's the message I want to give everybody. There is nothing at all, nothing at all guaranteed about this life. Four young college students in Moscow, Idaho went to bed one night. And a deranged man came into that house and killed all four of them. Nobody would have expected anything like that to happen. But you know, the whole time I heard about this, and I heard people complaining about the police and the investigators not saying enough and stuff like that, all I could tell you is I just kept praying because I knew that God had this issue in hand. And they tracked him from Moscow, Idaho, to some place in Pennsylvania, and they found him. Come on, somebody. Tell me that's not God. Tell me. Tell me that's not God. And, and, and I don't know the situation. I don't even know how to turn out. But all I know is four lives were snuffed out. Today, I want you to know the devil's busy trying to snuff out more lives. He's trying to do everything that he can. Maybe, maybe you're still walking around, but dead on the inside. I need to let you know right now that Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus Christ is what you need. Jesus Christ is what it's all about. And for every one of us, I want you to know that he will not fail you. He will not forsake you. And so as you make your decision while the praise team is singing, I want you to remember that whether it's coming back by Christian experience and saying on this first day, of the new year, I want to give my life to Christ again. I got baptized before, I've had a relationship with God, but for whatever reason, I've made a decision not to be in the fellowship with God's children, whatever that might be, or somebody saying, you know what, I've been to church a lot, but I've never really given my life to Christ. Today is your day. And I say that because there was a preacher who told us one time, he said, you know what, I was an usher in my church, I was a trustee in my church, 
He said, I was even a deacon in my church, but I didn't know the Lord. He said, but one day during a revival, he said, I heard a preacher preach. He said, what I realized is what that preacher was preaching was my life indeed. He said, at 35 years old, after all these things that I had been doing in church, he said, I found the Lord. He said, and I made a quick walk down that aisle to give God my life and to do that. And I just want you to know it's never too late. Amen. What he said was he was going through the motions. And sometimes that's what's happening. Folks are just going through the motions. But I promise you right now, today is a good day to stop going through the motions and give your life to Christ in a sincere way and be able to have this relationship sustain you for the rest of your life. Come on, choir, shall I sing? If you're making that decision, you can come now, you can come after the service. But I don't want you to leave without saying, Lord, I want to have that relationship, that relationship with you.